I'm fun. I'm charming. I'm not completely hideous. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be reviewing a video titled Female Educated and Perpetually Single. So we'll see what she has to say. Yep. But before we get into it though, we want to give you guys a second to subscribe to the channel, okay? Click that button. It takes two seconds, like 50, 60% of these guys. Yeah, 60% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. Yeah. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So here we go. But as you guessed from my introduction and by the lovely words of Miss Beyonce, I'm a single lady, no ring on this finger. So I'm 31 years old. I have my PhD in history. This is already kind of going like in an interesting direction because she's 31 and mm -hmm. she has her PhD. That's an amazing accomplishment, right? So mm -hmm. that's not, it's not a bad thing, but I feel like what's gonna happen is like, she's gonna use her PhD as like a, I'm better, so this is what I deserve. I consider myself very successful in my career choice. I absolutely love my job. And I'm pretty much happy about everything all the time. But I'm not married, I'm not engaged, I'm not even close. So according to traditional gender norms, I'm a failure. And I feel a lot of pressure to get married and settle down, and I want to. I want to find someone who's right for me. I want to find someone to share my life and love and experiences with you know, eventually get married and pop out a few spawn. Typical. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why it hasn't worked out for me yet. Um, obviously, my educational and career choices have forced me to move around a little bit in the past few years. But even still, I'm fun. I'm charming. I'm not completely hideous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to bash her, but I mean, yeah. She's not really attractive. She's like average, I would say. No, she's below average. Oh. And no disrespect to her. Yeah. She's below, she's overweight. I mean, let's be honest, right? Mm -hmm. High maintenance, I love cooking, I like watching sports, I like having sex. So, I've got a lot of pros in the minds of the male of our species, if you know what I'm saying. I think I'm a pretty decent catch. And in terms of what I want for a guy, well, when I was young, I created a long list of- Yo, these women with these lists kill me. After we did that video of the Steve Harvey one, after that, I'm like, yo, I'm done with these lists, with these women making all these lists. What is this? Ability to build things, likes bad TV. What? Outdoorsy. What else do we see here? <laughs> has Short a, hair. Has a boat. <laughs> has a boat. How many people have a boat? Nose plumbing. <laughs> Yankees uh, fan. What? Short hair. So if he has long hair, he's out. He, she said not a jerk. <laughs> she said not a jerk. Why can't you just put like a like kind hearted or something like that? You know what I mean? Nice but car. I... See, women have all these lists, right? They have like 30, 40 things on a list. And literally a man has three things. Oh my God. Do you see that? Spousal hire potential. Who puts that on a freaking list? This Yo, is ridiculous. I can't. And this is why she's single, right? Mm -hmm. it, I mean, 31 years, you've put your degree first, you have these unrealistic expectations, and now you're on a TED Talk. All the things that I wanted in my future husband. And there was all sorts of personal qualities and physical attributes and just general skills or uh, possessions that I thought would be useful. Well, as I'm getting older, this list keeps getting smaller and smaller. The first thing to go was all of those materialistic things. I didn't really care about those. The next thing to go was the skills. Uh, they would be useful, but I don't really need someone that's good at computers and cars and construction. So as the list started to dwindle, The problem was I, I... So here you have a classic example of a woman hitting the wall. <laughs> so she, like her yeah. value is going down. So as her value goes down, her options start to dwindle. So she started with 40 things and she's literally left with, what, six or seven things, right? And 
even a guy that's tall, over six feet tall, that's about 10% of the population. So even tall, she would have to remove. Mm -hmm. But uh, what are your thoughts on this? No, it's just funny that like, you're saying her options dwindle, whatever, but I'm like, that initial list though, even when you're young and you're popping, are you really gonna get all of that? You, you know gotta be saying? really, really hot and you gotta be exactly what a man wants. But how is that? No, but everything on that list, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's just, it's so unrealistic. Like, it's yeah. just all these unnecessary things that you put on your list. And then honestly, if she had, let's say five to 10 things on her list that she was just like, yo, this is like some, these are like my hard, like I have to get these things. Yeah. She probably would have been like with somebody by now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but so. the problem is she put her career first. Mm. I'm assuming she's a feminist. I mean, the way she's talking. Her degree is for single ladies, no ring, mm -hmm. as if it's a badge of honor. Meanwhile, she's 31, yeah. and let's say, you know, she's no longer in that career, or let's say her job fires her, or the economy crashes, or whatever the situation is, that career is not going to keep you warm at night, <laughs> and it's yeah. not going to fulfill your life. I started to feel like I'd given up some things that were really important, and... I was gonna have to settle for somebody that did, wasn't gonna make me happy and maybe wasn't gonna treat me very well. So I backtracked and I came up with most important things to me. Okay, so I don't care if it's superficial and shallow, I want somebody that's taller than me. I am five foot 10, I am not a small girl, all right? I don't want somebody that's gonna make me feel any bigger than I already am. I want somebody that shares my political beliefs, which is not important at all to some people. But I've dated guys with different political commitments, and I've realized that I don't like to argue. And I cannot be James Carville and Mary Madeline. I can't do it. Uh, I want somebody that's smart. I'm smart. And I want somebody I can talk to. Uh, they don't have to have a PhD necessarily, but they can't be threatened by mine. Basically, just somebody that has a general sense of intellectual curiosity and a love for learning. I need somebody that's ambitious and hardworking. I can't respect you if you don't have goals. Like, look at look at this list. I mean, if she started with this list initially in her 20s, mm -hmm. and she had a sense of urgency in regards to getting married, she mm -hmm. would have already been married. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Why is it that you're now 31, your options are dwindling, now you want a guy to come into your life and, and rescue you? Like, just think about all the guys she passed up on that might have been interested in her, but because of the ridiculous initial list that she had, she basically shunned them away. Mm -hmm. So now a guy is supposed to clean up this uh, mess, so to speak, and come into your life and, what, rescue you before mm -hmm. you, you know, hit your 40s? Uh, but what are your thoughts on that? No, honestly, I was going to say the same thing as you, is that if she started with the five-point list, she would have pro most likely been married by now. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That's exactly what I was thinking. So it's like all this time you wasted, and you could have had someone, you know, go through your PhD with you, and you can go, you know what I mean, build with somebody, right? Yeah. So it's unfortunate, and it could be avoided. You yeah. know what I mean? It doesn't have to be like in your 30s, like 31, 35, whatever. You don't have to be single for that long. You know what I yeah. mean? It's just, you know, reevaluate some things. So. Yeah, and, and the feminist movement, that's what they're pushing, right? And mm -hmm. it's failed a lot of women. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, women are dying alone nowadays, right? Yeah. But let's go ahead and continue. And then of course, you know, the general sense of humor, kind, honest, laid back, non-smoker, likes cats, etc. So I don't think that this list is unreasonable, and yet here I stand, maybe. <laughs> Sing. You know what kills me? I'm just gonna say it. There are women who wanna be like, I am everything, I'm the whole package, I bring everything to the table, right? And then they don't realize what men are looking for. You know what I mean? And yeah. men are very, we hear all the time, men are visual creatures, correct? Yeah. So for her to say she has the whole package, she's all of this in a bag of chips, it's like, okay, but have you really fit, like worked on your exterior? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like inside, okay, cool, that's fine. Like you might be, you would be a good person. You're intellectual and you have a lot of things you want to do for yourself, whatever, right? You're healthy, let's say. Mm -hmm. 
but on the outside if you're dressing like you know not that flattering your hair always looks messy your skin isn't up kept well you, you know you're not you don't look like you're at the best weight for yourself mm -hmm. it's going to have an effect on your dating life yeah you know what i mean it's and just so stupid to me when i when i see women like this and i'm like you know you could you could easily wear a nicer dress you know what i mean you could easily you know curl your hair or do something to style yourself and a little like light makeup just to kind of put yourself in like the best foot forward especially on a ted talk where mil <laughs> like oh, come on this is right. millions of people could if be you're not dressing this. up for a ted talk then you know what i'm saying what are you yeah. looking like on a date <laughs> you know what do you have to say i'm just yeah but that's her career has put her into that mindset she's not in her girly girly bag she's in her masculine bag because she has to compete in her career industry and she's not putting her feminine traits and her physical appearance first she's putting her intellect first and that's why you know she's appearing like this in front of us and now here she is saying woe is me why can't i find a good man and this is the classic example of a woman hitting the wall. Go like a slice of craft. <laughs> and what's worse is that everywhere I look in popular culture, especially in men's and women's magazines, I am bombarded by all sorts of messages pressuring me I need to get married and settle down. And it's kind of interesting. I read through the female magazines and they have articles about uh, how to find true love, where to find a man, where's Mr. Right? The quizzes are always asking, why am I still single? Where's my crush? Meanwhile, the men's magazines are touting singlehood and bachelor life. There's, a, there's actually advice about how to avoid commitment. Why are you focusing on media? Do you know what I mean? You easily could talk to your dad, your brother, your cousin, you know, like, old friends that are male to ask mm -hmm. to really if you want to get an honest opinion out of a guy it's not that hard yeah. you just be like give me the blunt like tell me what i need to do to improve if you're serious about it and you're like yo i actually do want to be with somebody mm -hmm. and don't fake it and be like oh i'm happy you know on the outside whatever but on the inside you know you want this right yeah. so look for the people who can give you that really solid advice and who can actually be honest with you and be like, listen, we get it, you have a PhD. You know, if I was one of her friends, I'd be like, I get it, you have a PhD, you think that's your value. But at the end of the day, I think you need to, you know, a bit of a makeover could really take you a long way, right. you know? So. Yeah, it boils down to accountability. Mm -hmm. Like she's not taking accountability as to her actions, you know, what she's done in the past. Instead, she's looking for external factors such as magazines and media to tell her what to do, horoscopes. Mm -hmm. But it's like, just look in the mirror and yeah. ask yourself, what do men want? Yeah. Versus just doing these mental gymnastics. Yeah, and like work with what you have, right? Don't look at don't look at magazines that are telling you go get plastic surgery or nothing crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Eat healthier, you know, go to the gym and, you know, maybe go to H&M. It's not that expensive to buy like, you know, simple dresses to look cute. It's not that expensive to look cute as a girl, you know? How to dump your girlfriend. I'm sitting here crying in my wine, taking a quiz over why he doesn't like me, and this is what the men's magazines are saying. Not to mention the endless assault of cliche questions I get from everybody in my life. BuzzFeed came out with this list a few months ago in August, and it's 24 things single people are tired of hearing. And boy, it is spot on. So, for example, how are you still single? You're so great. I know, right? <laughs> Don't you ever get lonely? Don't you want kids? Uh, yeah, duh, obviously. Uh, you should try online dating. That's my favorite. Huh, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, don't worry, you'll find someone. Just don't turn into a crazy cat lady. Too late on that one. Uh, you should let me set you up. Uh, hell no. See, when they turn to pets, that's when you know they've pretty much given up. Dogs, cats, <laughs> goldfishes. It, it's a wrap. Are you serious? It's a wrap. What if I just like, what if I just like, you know, a cute little puppy? If you're over 30, a woman, and decided to get a pet, you're basically replacing a man with a pet. I am so Cause you're, dead. Because at that point, you're looking for companionship. Uh, That's why okay. Kevin's always saying, buy a dog and die alone, because that's 
the only thing that's going to stand you really and because again if you're not improving yourself and you're not developing yourself a pet is going to accept you any which way right yeah, yeah yeah i don't know i just feel okay my opinion is just she shouldn't be so hard on herself do you know what i mean like if you're she shouldn't be hard on, hard the reason on herself why I'm say, no let me explain <laughs> so the reason why i'm saying i'm like i don't think she's you, being hard on herself at all i, I think oh she has, really well, I mean, when she's you're complaining. hearing these comments, no, what I was trying to say is uh -huh. that when you hear these comments from other people, when you're single, right, people want to maybe say things that rubs you the wrong way, whatever, don't let it get to you so much. Do you know what I mean? So if you're single in the moment um, and you know, you're, you know you're doing something to, you know, put yourself in a better position, and I don't know if she is, she's I don't know if not, she's but putting she's in any work to... She's not. Okay. She's not doing that. Okay, maybe I'm being, I'm being too nice again, She's so. turning to media outlets to yeah, pander, <laughs> to pander... To her reality yeah she's just grabbing random buzzfeed articles and saying yeah that's that's the, that's the reason why like she's not looking at herself in the mirror and saying this is what i need to fix mm -hmm. right because here she is with this buzzfeed article and she's reading these slogans and and captions and she's like yeah that sounds like me okay yeah, never mind i take it back so she <laughs> has zero accountability yeah if anything she she should be hot on herself mm -hmm. right that, like that's what she should be doing <laughs> yeah yeah okay so i'm sorry i take back what i said i, I guess i'm thinking in, in more of like myself like if there's a point where you're single like d like and you know you're doing something to improve yourself like give yourself a little bit of time to like you know and then put yourself out there you know what i mean if right. you're trying but and she ain't saying comments, that yeah she ain't saying that she ain't so. saying um approaching men asking them what they want she ain't saying you're right yeah you know um working with a matchmaker she isn't saying i'm speaking with my counselor she's not on or psychiatrist dating. like she's not doing any self-improvement and you yeah. are reflective as to the outcome that you're getting so if she's getting this outcome then it means she needs to uh, again focus on herself because as we discuss you know women are like parking spots all the good spots are taken quickly a man is not going to leave a beautiful, submissive, fit, feminine, and friendly woman for 31 years. That's not going to happen. She's mm -hmm. going to get roped up by 21, 22, 23, right? But mm -hmm. let's continue. And then, of course, don't give up. It'll happen. And then when you stop looking, it'll happen. Which one is it? <laughs> and my absolute favorite, you should put yourself out there more. All right, listen, just, just, just listen. I'm out there, all right? I'm trying, you know? I'm not going to the bar. I'm not, you know, on the prowl. I'm a little too close to cougar status right now. But I'm keeping my eyes and my mind and my heart open. And I have tried online dating. And I've met some really great guys on there, but overall my experience has been horrible. I don't know how well Martha has done, but more often than not, my suitors involve weird encounters, um, all sorts of insults to my looks and my education and my taste in movies and music, etc. All right, so here we go. The men online dating or telling her it's her career it's her looks right and instead of saying okay this is what hundreds of men are saying nope it's the man like the man is the issue mm -hmm. right so yeah. there's zero accountability but she's really looking for a beta guy that's really what it is mm -hmm. she's looking for a guy that's gonna conform to her and she's gonna be the dominant person in the relationship mm -hmm. that's really what she's saying and more than once you know, a circa like five foot four, 300 pound dude hitting on me, which like, you know, looks aren't everything. And I applied your confidence, buddy. But really, really, come on. And then of course the typos. She's basically insulting a guy that's five foot four, 300 pounds. And here she is overweight, putting her degree first. Like a guy for her being five foot four, 300 pounds, is equivalent for a guy with her degree and her being overweight. Yep. Like it's it's literally the same thing. Yeah. The very first thing it said on my profile was I have a PhD. 
And yet, hey girl, you thin. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, translation, hey girl, you fine. How about you hit me up and get with me? Hey, right? I didn't reply. <laughs> um, and then we have, um, oh, here we go, finally. Okay, so I think I'm a decent catch. I think I'm realistic, and I'm out there trying. To be quite honest, I really don't think she's trying. She's so delusional. Mm. She's so far gone. Mm. And she's, she's wanting an alpha guy on his purpose to take her as she is. Mm-hmm. Yo, enough, I don't think enough women hear honesty. Like, actually hear the honesty that comes to them. Um, because if she, like you said before, all those comments of the guys being like, oh, you're overweight, your, your degree, the, these are the problems. Mm-hmm. Like if she really just took a step back and she was just like, okay, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't lead with my PhD, right? It's great that you have it, but don't lead with that. And you know, maybe try to get a friend to take better pictures of you. There are things you can actually do to improve. Like, yeah, but it, it goes down to the mindset. She's not even in that mindset. Oh, she's like, I have my PhD, guys. You have to want. Look, look at all this. Her, like, her value for her, according to her, is her PhD. Yeah. So you saying get clothing and take better pictures. She's not even on that. It could be so easy though, and she's just making it so much harder for herself. Do you know well, I mean? this again, this is what the feminist movement has done to women. Yeah. Be independent. Where all my single ladies at? <laughs> PhD. And she's so far gone that this is her reality. Mm. So she she doesn't know what she doesn't know. Mm. Like she doesn't know that she doesn't know that she's not that attractive. That she's not that attractive. Okay. So you telling her do this. You like you're speaking. Like, I'm good though. What are you yeah, talking Yeah, you're about? speaking a completely different language. Yeah, you're just not the right guy for me. Yeah. And then we'll keep going through this whole cycle of just like oh oh gosh whatever right so she's going to get into her 40s and 50s and ultimately she's going to die alone which is unfortunate Mm -hmm. right but but she can change something about it you know what i mean yeah but you gotta you gotta know what to change Mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta have the self-realization to want to change yeah right Yeah, yeah she doesn't she doesn't have that self aha moment she hasn't had that aha moment to change yeah like there's no spark <laughs> in her membrane <laughs> to change right yeah so let's continue so i have a few words of advice for everybody that wants to butt their noses in and give me some information to help this poor tragic single girl when you feel that word vomit bubbling up when you feel that well, are you seeing someone just consider this list first, okay? So here we go. Number one, don't ask me about my love life. If I have something to tell you, if I have some great news, if I've met someone that merits discussion, I'll tell you. Until then, there's only one correct answer to this question. And when I give the wrong answer, it just leads to disappointment and awkward feelings for both of us. So don't ask me about my love life. It's no. awkward for you. It's awkward for her. Because the other person's asking you just to genuinely, like, you know, like how's life going? Like, yeah. how's work? How's, you know, how, relationship? Any? Are you talking to anybody? It's just, it's just common conversation, right? And if there isn't anybody, just be like, oh, you know what? Like, I'm kind of just, like, dating or I'm talking to some people, but nothing, like, you, could, you don't have to be that emotional about it. Well, I mean, that's telling because it's emotionally affecting her. Yeah. Like, it's affecting it's her... Psychologically, right? Mm-hmm. Because if someone's simply asking you a question and like you're, you're making a like TED this. talk to say, don't ask me this question, <laughs> like it's affecting you. Number two, it's not contagious. I don't get why married people think they only can hang out with married people. Please don't cut me out of your life because I don't have a spouse. This mentality is the reason why, and I tell you in previous videos. Mm-hmm. A single person like her should not be friends and go out like her and go out with a married woman because her ideologies on what relationships are are ultimately going to rub off on that married woman. What are your thoughts? 
a hundred percent agree i was just kind of like you know what it partially is contagious a little bit where like if you're talking about relationships so much and if you know like if you're always like group what is it double dating and stuff like that right um like married couple married couple we all hang out whatever right like you guys it's all gonna kind of uh work together for your benefit you know what i mean Mm -hmm. but in this instance if you're married and your friend is single like this kind of single where she's like being super negative it will affect you yeah or even any any single because her like she's gonna start to overanalyze the marriage Mm -hmm. like she's gonna be like oh you cook for your husband oh you clean for your husband like he should be doing that for you yeah or whatever right so and then a friend's gonna be like yeah like maybe like maybe she does have a point right Mm -hmm. because women in groups are easily influenced by um, other women other, yeah. like within the group um, so ultimately she's going to just poison the mind of a married woman mm-hmm. um, but let's continue I'm not terminally ill it's not contagious we can still be friends <laughs> stop the pity party oh if I get one more sympathetic head tilt and you know patting on the arm it's going to be okay you'll find someone oh I could just scream Stop the phony sympathy. Try genuine support instead. And I don't really know how to explain this except to think of my closest friends that tell me, you know, they're excited when I'm excited. And when it goes wrong, it's no big deal. In connection with that, it's harder on me than it is on you. I will never understand when I hear through the grapevine that somebody says, oh, so-and-so is so worried about you. You... You know, they just really wish that you would find someone and settle down. Yeah, I'm so sorry that I'm keeping them up at night with my pathetic single life. As if I don't have enough to worry about, then I've got to worry about them too. Believe me, I'm dealing with it. When you are getting into, you know, like your mid-30s, whatever, and you don't have anybody, no prospect, like not even a boyfriend at this point, you know what I mean? Yeah, your parents are going to be concerned. They're going to have something to say, you know? Well, when you get old and you know your body's not moving the way it is and god forbid you have um some kind of health issues and you're single as a woman i mm-hmm. mean that's not a good situation you want to be in right mm-hmm. you want to be with somebody um for better or for worse right and here she is thinking that she can do it all on her own and again this is what's destroying the traditional household, mm-hmm. the, the tra- tra- traditional family, right? Yeah. Because women today are taught to do it on their own. Harder on me. Oh, sorry. In connection, it doesn't affect your life at all. Whether or not I have a boyfriend, doesn't matter. And if it does matter, if, if your life is so dependent on that, you need to get a hobby, okay? <laughs> all right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and end this video. Um, is this there is anything mess. else to say? I honestly, I'm kind of, I'm worried for her. Sorry, but yes, I am worried for you. Like, it's just, especially because she knows what's, what's, I find is like common is that the women that are over here being like, in the beginning of the video, she was like, I'm always happy. There's nothing really wrong. I love my job, all this stuff, right? Yeah. Lo and behold, getting more into it, she's just like, uh, I'm already have so much to do with. I already have like, I I do want to get married. I want to have kids. Don't ask me about it. Like, it's very passive aggressive. Yeah. Um, and she's it doesn't lying. need to be like this though. Yeah, she's you know lying I mean? to herself. Yeah. Deep down inside, she's suffering. Yeah. Like she, like she's really going through it. But that's and, how a lot of women like think though. Yeah. You know what I mean? They try to put on this front. front and how you know big and tough tough they are. And then they're winos behind closed doors, you know, drinking bottles of wine yeah, and t- <laughs> <laughs> taking uh, prescription uh, medication, right? But yeah. anyways, guys, we're going to go ahead and end this video. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time. Bye, guys.